Saturday is no longer Super Saturday since they moved the women's final to Sunday and the men's final to Monday. But it's still a great Saturday. We have uh, the men's semifinals and a bunch of great doubles, juniors, and qua- and wheelchair action. To start the day, uh, Djokovic Rarinka. I said this while I was at the match live with Djokovic and Eugenie. It's right on the video. I said, if Djokovic plays like this, he's going to lose to Rarinka. Rarinka is a happy camper. And if there's one thing I've learned this U.S. Open slam is happy equals wins. Uh, it can overcome physical problems, form issues, conditions. It can overcome a lot. Uh, Rarinka is a happy camper. He's been playing great all year. He had a little bit of a downtime this summer with a back issue, but he comes in and he, you know, it, it worked itself out. Uh, it doesn't seem to be bothering him. I have to think he's going to be a little fatigued at some point because he's played such so much tough tennis. Uh, Djokovic should have a lot in the tank because he hasn't played a lot of hard tennis. So thank, thankfully, behind the tennis crier and the crowd uh, the other night, we really got behind Yuzny and it pumped him up. He was asking for it. He needed it. He was low on energy. He got one set, and it really made Djokovic have to raise his game in the last set, though usually totally tired out then. But I think that uh, that little bit will help Novak some. Uh, it, without that, I, I would really think if he was coming in here off of Granolers and uh, the Sousa win, I would go for a Rarinka all the way. If the conditions were quicker, though we have lively balls now, and, and Rarinka loves these balls, he can get a lot of power off of them, yet they're still big enough that you can get a lot of rallies and spins and everything. So, you know, it sits up for him for a second, then he can control the points and, and, and use his aggression, his power from the baseline. Uh, but the conditions have been pretty slow. We haven't seen fast weather. Uh, one, you know, when it was warmer, it was really humid. Now it's drier, but it's pretty cold, and the wind has been bad. So it, this has been a slow climate for uh, U.S. Open season, and not even really in the middle. So we really never saw these balls at their full uh, liveliness. I guess I guess I should say, but uh, Warinka. Uh, still likes them. He's still going to have control. And I think the little bit of slower conditions have helped him a bit. But now with Djokovic, it may hurt him. It is going to be warmer today. So that may help speed it up a bit. But I don't think it's going to be enough. And I think, especially because it's supposed to be wind still. And that will help slow things down. It's gusting in different directions. And that's the problem too. So I do think that uh, Novak may start off, you know, not where he needs to be in the beginning, or Rinka grabs a set. To me, the key is going to be the second set. I think where Rinka has to get a two set to love lead, and then he could win this. If he, if he, you know, the second set's probably going to be a very t- difficult set, but if Rinka loses that or goes into the third set with a 1 1 tie, I think it's going to be tough. He may even get a third set, but I actually think Djokovic will eke out a tough third set, and then Rinka will fade in the fourth set from fatigue. That's my opinion. Now, uh, if no, Warinka does get that second set, I think then a two set to love lead, Djokovic definitely fights back, gets a third, Warinka probably comes down a level, but I think he pumps it back up in the fourth and takes it. So I will go for Djokovic though. I think what's going to happen is he is going to finally get his top form somewhere in the middle of that second set, be able to pull out a close you know, one at the end in the tie break or whatever, and then be able to wrap this up in four. Uh, so that's the call there. And then as far as Nadal Gasquet, uh, you know, I would, I, you know, I see Rarinka winning much easier than I see Gasquet winning, but not because of who they're, not because Nadal or Djokovic are playing so great. Again, Nadal and Djokovic have not had much competition in my opinion, and they're both a little under form from where it appears that they are. It appears that they're playing great. They keep saying they are, especially Djokovic. You know, he kills a tired Granolers and it's like, I'm on top of the world. Well, you know, it, it takes two. It always depends on who you're playing. Uh, Nadal doesn't really talk like that as much, but yeah, certainly, I don't know. They're ta- they haven't had the, they haven't needed their top form. So, except maybe Djokovic a little f- with Yuzny there at the end. So maybe Nadal a little bit with Cole Schreiber, but I really felt like that was just the long rain delay and at night that night it was just a little bit of a sluggish Nadal, no big deal. But not to take away from Cole Schreiber. But here's the problem with the Gasquet Nadal matchup. Gasquet doesn't match up well with Nadal. Rarinka can match up well with Djokovic with his big aggression. Gasquet's not a big enough hitter nor aggressive enough, and that's the issue. 
Now, as he's working on it, he plays a lot of defense and or off the baseline, and then he'll all of a sudden bang a big forehand and get into the net or race to the net or you know mix it up. And he's been doing that. So the more he does that, the better he's going to be. And he will go far in more slams if he continues to improve his aggression. But for now, in my opinion, it's not enough time. Just like Nali said, I wish I could play Serena in six months. She's getting better with her aggression, but she's not ready for someone like Serena in form. I don't know that Nadal's quite as informed as Serena, but he certainly had a great year and a great summer. Uh, so I would say, and he looks physically in the best shape of any player. And actually, Serena looked a little sluggish in the summer with a cold and a little injury, but now she looks really in great fitness too. But anyway, Nadal looks in great fitness. So Gasquet's game at the moment still leads into Nadal too much. It's too much patience. Nadal's going to take control and smash it. Now, if it's later in the day, if the first match goes long, which it should, then it will be a little like cooler later in the day, the sun going down. And if conditions slow enough, Gasquet may get away with some of that patience. If it's earlier in the day, Nadal's going to really whop him. But if it's later in the day, I think Gasquet hangs in, maybe even takes like a second set. But in the end, it's Nadal in three or four. And I think uh, Gasquet starts to wear out at the end from fatigue, mentally probably more than anything. Okay, uh, and then uh, the doubles final, women's doubles, this will be at night. Uh, conditions will be slower, but uh, and doubles not not quite as pertinent to conditions. It's, more, it's, it's such a quick game, and it's really about timing and, and form and, and stuff like that. So, uh, and a couple points here and there. Uh, Barty and Delacqua, again, very happy campers, like Warenka. They love playing together. They've been to three slam finals now. I think they get this one. Uh, Lavashva and Radeka uh, are probably the better doubles team because they have more power and they have a big serve. So, you know, Barty Delac will really suffer on the power aspect. Uh, but Radeka's had a rough year physically, and Lavashva hasn't been that great lately either. So, I know that they played great against the Williams. The Williams had a letdown the night before. But, I mean, they, you know, Lavakova and, and Radeka did not look that great, in my opinion, earlier in the tournament, and not even that great when they upset Petrova and Shrebotnik. Uh So I have to think they're going to come back down to earth. They made the big upset. They look healthier suddenly. They didn't look so healthy even earlier in the tournament. Uh, now Lavakova doesn't have anything on her legs. Radeka looks more, has more energy. If that keeps up, because of their power, they can get this. But I think they're going to come back down a little bit, let down back to the level they were before they played. They got all fired up for the Williams. Uh, that night match, now they're in the middle of the day. They didn't have much time off in between uh, having to play that late night match. So I really think Barty Delac were going to jump on them, blitz them in the first set, close second set as Radeka and company fight back. But Barty and Delac, well, now they have the experience, they take it. I think they finally get their slam. Uh, we go over to court 13. Again, no Armstrong, grandstand, and court 17. For whatever reason, that all shuts down, and we're on the outer courts when it's not Ash, which I don't understand, but I'm sure there's some logistics to that. Uh, Sittol has been on fire. He joined the top five this year. Uh, he's 26, so he's been around a little bit. Lapthorne's only 22, I think, He's he, but he came up a couple years ago. He's been really knocking at the door, trying to overcome the legend Wagner, who's the number one still but he's getting older. Uh, Lapthorne hasn't looked so good this tournament, and I don't know why. I haven't seen him play, but I mean by the, by the lines. I mean, he didn't even challenge uh, Wagner that much in the first round. And this is round robin, remember. And then they find out who gets to play in the final. Three days of round robin. But in the second day, he even was losing to Nick Taylor, who's definitely below him. On uh, Nick Taylor has a nice game, but he doesn't have enough power. So Lapthorne didn't look so great there. So... I don't know what happens here because Sithole actually upset Wagner yesterday and he got on fire serving and with power and movement. And if that continues, I think he's going to pull the upset. But Lapthorne maybe is going to finally wake up and, and, and you know get, his set, get another shot at Wagner in the final tomorrow because that's what he wants. He wants to get Wagner. He wants to get the crown. So we will see. But I'm going to go with Lapthorne, but I'm not really sure what's going on there. And Sithole is having a great year. Uh, Sithole, I have a little link below. I had one yesterday, the same link. It's a biology, I mean, I'm sorry, a biography of his life. It's really interesting. He's missing legs and the right arm. He only has a left arm. It's absolutely unbelievable what he can do. Okay, uh, court 13. 
a doubles final. Uh, the big upset yesterday was Jermaine and Schaefer's upsetting the top team, Hude and Cunieta, who usually win all this in the doubles. But Jermaine and Schaefer's have been around for a while and have done great in the doubles in the past. So I'm going to go for them now that they have, they're on fire. And the other women's doubles in the wheelchair, uh, Griffion and Van Coot, legends, basically, in the doubles. They almost even beat the Verger doubles team a couple of years ago. So, or last year, I think. So, and nobody almost beats Verger. <laughs> so, I'm going to go with them, definitely, even though Eller Brock and the Japanese girl are good. Uh, then the wheelchair quads double final, the other doubles final. All the doubles finals for the wheelchairs are on court 13 t- today. Uh, Nick Taylor and Wagner are legendary together. And yes, Lapthorne and Sito are really good and up and coming, but I got to have to go with the legends. Doubles, you don't wear out as much, even in wheelchairs, so I, I'm not worried about Wagner there. Uh, the semifinals for the juniors now in court 11, Hebe has made an incredible run uh, through to the under-18 playoffs into the main draw of uh, the U.S. Open. Oh, I'm sorry, she got into the qualifying draw, but she won one turn, one match in the qualifying. Uh, and then she went far here to the semifinals and juniors. But she runs a lot in the back of the court. And after all the tennis, I really think she's going to wear down a bit. Plus these lively balls, even in the cooler weather, really jump, and Kanju is a big, she can hit it hard, and I think she's going to hit through Hebe's defense and, and take this. Uh, a lot of big hitters still, you know, in the end, the big hitters won out. The only reason we kind of didn't see that in the men's game is because uh, the, the the guys that can move, even Cole Schreiber, but, you know, definitely Djokovic and those guys can just move so well. Uh, Rink is playing, but Rink is hitting with a lot of power, but uh, I think in the men's game, because of the great movers, there needed to be a little bit better conditions, uh, a little faster, and that would have helped Isner, Burdich, and the company. Uh, but in the women's game, I mean, definitely we've been seeing it, even in the juniors level, even for the boys, uh, power has been win- with these lively balls, has been winning out. Okay, women's champion, this is the doubles final of the women's champions. They call it legends in the other slams. Uh, definitely Martina. You always have to go with Martina here. She doesn't play around, even in the champions. Um, Renee Stubbs isn't that much out of form. I mean, she's like in her, you know, not much out of her prime. So that together, that's too tough. But nice to see Chandra Rubin and Majoli in this. And so they should take that final. We've got all the doubles finals today, except for the men's doubles this tomorrow. Uh, the junior boys single semifinals. I'm going to go for an upset here, but I mean, this is a toss up. Uh, Varev, I love Varev's game. He's the younger brother of Mikel Varev. He's aggressive like his older brother, but he has fitness issues like his older brother as well, a little bit. But he's taller than his older brother. Alexander is about, I don't know, 6'4 or something. And he hits a big serve. He has a, a great game coming to the net. Uh, he can run in the back of the court some, too. So he's just got the all around good, aggressive game. But Korik is playing, in my mind, like a, a Djokovic style with. Hard hitting from the back, but a lot of defense and, and controlling from the baseline. And with the cooler conditions, even with the lively balls, this is working really well. He already beat a couple power hitters to get here, and I have a feeling he's going to make Varev go long. If Varev can wrap this up in two, it's Varev, but if it goes into three, I'm going to take Korik. The other doubles, uh, champions doubles final on the men's side, is uh, in nighttime, McEnroe brothers, the Mac brothers. I like Chang and Martin, but you got to go with the Mac brothers. You have to. You, you cannot be serious. They're going to take this. Uh, this is an interesting match. Junior girls, semifinals, singles. 15-year-old American Tornado Alicia Black has a sister named Hurricane. Kid you not. Check the link below. Uh, her mom, I mean, their, their parents named them these names, and, and, and supposedly, I've never seen her play, but Tornado Black moves like a tornado. She runs all around the back of the baseline and gets balls back and fights and fights and fights, and she already beat uh, one power hitter by doing that. Now, Lautner used her power to make to get the big upset yesterday, I think, of Benchik it was, uh, but now she has to do it two days in a row, and I think she, this is a total toss-up. I don't know who to go. It's power versus the defense. A uh, little cooler conditions, but this goes off in the afternoon. So I think Lautner, with her experience, should be able to get this. So she doesn't have a lot of experience <clears throat> at the high level. Toss up, but I'll go a little bit for the power because it's in the afternoon. Uh, let's see here. Then we have the another doubles final. This is the junior boys doubles final, and I Red Licky has and uh, Majerik. Majerik is actually from Poland, but Redlicki's parents are from Poland, even though he's U.S. And they, this is their first time teaming together. They met earlier in the year in Milan, and uh, they upset the number one team with Korik 
in the first round in a big super tie break, and they're just on fire, and they've gone all the way now, and they made another big upset. I have to go with them. The other team's also an upstart team, but, I, but I'm going with the Polish team. And then we have uh, another semifinals here in the singles, and this is the Kakanakis one. He's been using his power. He got off to maybe a little slow start the day before, but I think that um, he, even if he gets off a slow start here, Garin won the French Open, but I think he's not going to be able to rally all day with Kakanakis. And Kakanakis with these lively balls, we're going to have some heat in the air by this time of the day. On court seven, though, court seven plays a little slower, so that will help Garin, but... But I think Kalkanox is going to hit through his defense and pull this out in a tight three sets. Maybe coming back from a set down. Uh, what else do we have here? Uh, jumping down. The last one on court seven of the day, later in the day. Uh, this doubles team, the last doubles final, uh, the junior girls. Uh, Krejcikova, who's number four in the world in singles, and Siniakova, who's number three. What a check team, three and four. I know Benchik's at the number one, but I've, I've, and they're a top team too, a doubles team with Tormo. But I have to go with these Czech team. They'll hit through the court a little better with these lively balls. But, you know, and Sinekova is carrying a little bit of an injury, but I don't, I'm not going to hurt her in doubles. She got upset in singles, but she'll be fine in doubles. I go for the number one team here. Uh, the men, the boys' juniors' doubles had a lot of upsets, but this one is going to follow form, it looks like. And then last but not least, the only match on court 10. Wow, real outer court there. Uh, another round robin event, and this is the the king Wagner, and he, you know, poor Nick Taylor. He has even more deficiencies physically than the rest of the wheelchair guys, and he just is amazing. He can't get much power, but he gets a lot of spin and different uh, kind of hitting and serving, and he, he he's great. I mean, he's a top player, but he when he gets against the guys like Wagner, who has a lot of power and Lapthorn and uh, even Sittel, it, it just it's it's too much and. Wagner and Taylor make a great doubles team. They're legendary. And then Wagner always beats his buddy in the singles. And I think it's going to happen again. Wagner wants to try to defend his crown again and uh, try to hold off Lapthorne, I think, and, and coming after him.